my amazing students. This is Mrs. A, and we are covering 9.2 today, and that is rational exponents. So, these cool little things are fun to play with. And remember that we started off on this section with a definition, and the definition was simply that the square root of x is x to the one half power. Okay? So, Basically, we can change from our um, radical form to our exponent form, and we should be able to go back and forth between these two. Now, when we have it in this exponent form, we mean that the 2 is the root, because this was a square root, and the exponent on the x here is a 1. So it's x to the 1 the square root of x to the 1, and when we turn it into a, radical, a, a rational expression, it is rational exponent, it is x to the 1 half. So 9 to the 1 half means the same thing as the square root of 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. 27 to the 1 third is the same thing as the cubic root of 27, and the cubic root of 27 is 3. Now notice, this negative is on the outside. Remember the exponent applies only to the number or the variable right before it. Unless the negative is in a parenthesis, it is not included. So this is the same thing as negative 1 times 16 to the 1 fourth. Okay, these are equivalent statements. And 16 to the 1 fourth is 2 because 2 to the 4th power is 16. So this part here is 2, and then negative 1 times 2, my answer would be negative 2. And the last one on this page is 32 to the 1 fifth, which is the same thing as the fifth root of 32, and the fifth root of 32 is 2, because 2 to the 5th power is 32. So now, we have a next board here. Now the negative is included. We have a parenthesis around the negative. This makes the um, half power, which is the same thing as the square root, apply to the whole negative. That's the same thing as the square root of a negative 144. And we know that is not a real number. So, not a real number is the answer there, okay? And then I have a negative 32 to the fifth power, but the, I mean the one-fifth power, which is the fifth root, okay? And since it's an odd root, the negative is no problem. The answer is a negative two, because if I take negative two and I raise it to the fifth power, I get negative 32. So the answer is negative two. This one has the negative outside. There is no parenthesis. Therefore, I can take the fourth root of 16 and make that 2 and then tack on negative 1 times 2 to get negative 2. The last one on this board is 8 to the 2 thirds. Now, when I have something like this, this means the same thing as the third root and the second power. So it's 8 squared, the cubic root of 8 squared. The nice thing is that this is also exactly equal to the cubic root of 8 squared. Okay, it does not matter whether we square first and then take the root or whether we take the cubic root first and then square, we will get exactly the same number, okay? So the answer is gonna be the cubic root of eight, which is two, and two squared is four. If we had done it this way, it would have been the cubic root of 64, and the cubic root of 64 is also four. So we are free to do it in the order that we would like to do it in. That's very nice.
So now we've got a 16, negative 16 to a 3 halves, but since the root is 2 and it only applies to the 16, we can do this problem. This is the same thing as negative 1 times the 16 to the 3 halves. So that's the same thing as negative outside the radical, the square root of 16 to the third. Oh, but that's a big number. But remember, it's not going to matter whether we put the 3 there or whether we do all of this first and then put the 3 out there, which is what I'm going to do because it's faster and easier. So the square root of 16 is 4. 4 cubed is 64. And then I multiply by a negative 1. So I get a negative 64, and I've run out of room on that problem. So negative 64 is the answer on that one. Okay, now I've got the negative inside the parenthesis. I have an even root, therefore I have to say not a real number. Okay, then I come down here. I've got an odd root and it is only applying to the 32. There's no parenthesis here. So I'm going to take the fifth root of 32 the fifth root of 32 is 2. I'm going to raise 2 to the fourth power to get 16. And then I multiply by a negative 1 to get negative 16. The last one on this board is negative 125 raised to the 2 thirds power. Okay, so the cubic root of a negative is no problem. The one in the denominator of the fraction is the root. Okay, so I have a cubic root of negative 125, which is a negative 5, and then I square a negative 5, and I get a positive 25. And that is the answer on that board. Now we're going to begin talking about negative exponents. Now remember, when we were dealing with negative exponents before, if we had x to the negative 2, x to the negative 2, that was the same thing as 1 over x to the 2. Okay? And if we had a fraction, x over y to the negative 2, then since the whole fraction was raised to the negative power, we would flip the whole thing over. Not just one thing moved down, we would flip the whole thing over and we would get y squared on top and x squared on bottom. So remember those two rules that we've done before, way back in our exponent chapter. And now we look at 9 to the negative 3 halves. That's the same thing as um, 9, 1 over 9 to the 3 halves. Okay, 1 over 9 to the 3 halves. Well, when I look at 9, the square root, that's the root, that's the power, the square root of 9 is 3, and 3 cubed is 27. So the answer to this one is 27. Usually, not always, but usually it's easiest and You'll keep your numbers smaller if you do the root and then the power. And remember, we can do them either way we want, and we will get the same answer. All right, so 81 to the negative 3 fourths. We're taking the fourth root of 81. The fourth root of 81 is 3. And so 3 to the negative 3 would be 1 over 27. Or... We did the negative, I did the negative 3 later, or we could have just flipped it at the beginning and made it 1 over 81 to the 3 fourths, and I would have still gotten 1 over 27. So on this board, we have a fraction raised to a negative exponent. So I'm going to flip the whole fraction 
and make it 27 over 8 raised to the positive 4 thirds. Okay, so basically, I'm going to take my root of both numbers first, and the cubic root of 27 is 3, and the cubic root of 8 is 2, and then I'm going to raise both of those to the fourth power. So I took the cubic root first, and now I'm going to raise them both to the fourth power. 3 to the fourth power is 81, so let's put it right here, 81. And 2 to the 4th power is 16. So the answer to that one is 8, 81 over 16. Then we have negative 2 thirds again. So I can either, you know, think of this as 125 over 1. Think of it as a fraction and flip the whole thing. But that's essentially what we do. So basically, this is going to be 1 over 125 raised to the two-thirds, okay? The cubic root of 125 is 5, and then 5 squared is 25, so we're going to get 1 over 25 for that last one there. Now we need a new board. All right, before I go on, I found one error I had gotten to that point right. This was uh, in one that was like the two boards back. 9 to the negative 3 halves is 1 over 9 to the 3 halves. I had that right. But then when I simplified it, I put the answer was 27. It's really 1 over 27. So please correct that in your notes. I'm sorry. All right, so we have... A negative and remember the negative in the front is not going to affect this evaluation here because the negative is not inside the a parenthesis to make it um, acted upon by the negative two-thirds so I'm gonna just say 8 to the one-third basically what I'm doing is I'm writing this in my mind as negative 1 times 8 to the one-third raised to the negative 2 power, okay? So I'm writing it as a, I'm breaking it up and doing the root and then the power, okay? Now, I could, at the very beginning, flip the whole thing over and do it that way. It really doesn't matter. They're both correct. So I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. 8 to the 1 third is 2. So I'm going to have 2 to the negative 2, and 2 to the negative 2 is going to be 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 4th. But I haven't taken care of this negative 1. So I've got 1 over 4th times a negative 1, so my answer is negative 1 over 4. This one, my negative is included. But it's not a problem because I've got a cubic or an odd root. So if I write this as negative, um, let's go ahead on this one. See, we did it a little differently this one. Let's go ahead and flip it this one. This will be negative 27 and flip it down underneath. And then it's to the positive 2 thirds. We'll just put that in there. It doesn't matter because 1... So we can write it like that, 1 over negative 27 to the positive 2 thirds, and I could even write it like this. It doesn't matter. I'm going to get the same answer all three ways, I mean two, both ways, or I could do it the same way I did this one and deal with the negative 2 at the end, but we're going to do this one this way. So we flipped the negative 2 down and got the 2 thirds. So now I'm taking 1 to any power is still 1. But negative 27, the cubic root of that is going to be a negative 3. Negative 3 squared is going to be 9. My answer is going to be 1 over 9.
So now we're going to start reviewing our exponent rules. Okay, whenever I raise a power to another power, then I'm going to multiply the two powers together. And that's going to give me x to the 6. And you can see that that should be true because isn't x to the second square, I mean cubed, going to be x squared times x squared times x squared, which is going to give me x to the 6. This one, I'm multiplying like bases together, so I should add the two exponents together. One is positive and one is negative, so I should get x to the negative 2, but x to the negative 2 is going to go downstairs and become 1 over x squared. Division of like um, bases, we're going to subtract the exponents. So we're going to get b to the 6th, and that is positive, so that would be the final answer. And when here I'm raising a power to another power, I will multiply these two together and get 3 to the 12 fifths. Okay, and 3 to the 12 fifths, basically there is no perfect root. Um, so I could leave it like that, or I, if I was going to simplify it, see the 12 fifths is more than 1. Okay, so I can think of this and break it apart into, um, so yeah, I would break it apart because this is over 1, and I would say this is the same thing as 3, 12 divided by 5 is 2, with 2 fifths left over. Okay, so I'm going to put 2 um, plus 2 fifths, and since it's 2 plus 2 fifths. Isn't this the same thing as 3 squared times um, 3 to the 2 thirds? 2 fifths. Excuse me, that's a 5. And 3 squared is 9. So 9 times 3 to the 2 fifths would be correct. This is correct, but it's not completely simplified. I've got nine holes in there. Okay, I've got 27. And when I multiply like bases, I add their exponents. Two-thirds plus one-third is one. So my answer is 27 to the one, or just 27. This one down here is going to be 4. When I divide like bases, I subtract their exponents. So I'm going to get 4 to the 6 thirds. And 4 to the 6 thirds is 4 squared. And 4 squared is 16. That's not a square root. That's a box for the answer. falling off my table. All right, so now I'm multiplying like bases, so I add their exponents. 1 fourth plus 5 fourths is 6 fourths, so I get x to the 6 fourths, but x to the 6 fourths reduces to x to the 3 halves, and again, x to the 3 halves is greater than 1. So I can think of that as an x to the 1 plus one-half, or x times x to the one-half, or x times x to the one-half. The last one here on this board is, first I would deal with my, oh, I can't. They're not both p's. I got a p and a q, so I can't do that. So I'm going to go ahead and raise each one to the 8th power. So I'm going to get p to the 8 over 6, which will reduce, and p to the 24 over 2, which will reduce. Well, the p to the 24 over 2 is easy. Um, excuse me. That's a q. q, q, q. 
q to the 24 over 2 becomes a q to the 12. The numerator becomes p to the 4 thirds. So let's just change that to 4 thirds because of space. And p to the 4 thirds is a whole p. And so basically that's 1 plus 1 third of p or p times p to the 1 third. And we start a new board. Okay, I'm going to bring three of those back again. Um, this is correct, but they left the answer in this form. I don't consider this form as simplified, but they apparently do. I don't know what your connect math will do. Because if I turn this back into a radical form, it would be the fifth root of 3 to the 12th. Okay, so the fifth root of 3 to the 12th is definitely not simplified in radical form. But they're considering that the final answer in this form. Okay, I would break it up into 2 and 2 fifths and have 3 squared times 3 to the 2 fifths, which is 9, 3 to the 2 fifths. I would have done it this way. They're calling this the answer. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. I don't know what your connect math is going to do. Okay. Um, let's look at another one. Okay, we did this one. They considered that the final answer. I would not have considered it the final answer. I would have broken it up into x to the one and a half, and that would have been a whole x times an x to the one half. They're calling this one simplified, okay? Um, so I'm going to count it right on your test either way, but I wanted to bring it back to you because I didn't know what Connect Math was going to do to you there. And again, they considered this one finished, and they did not break the four-thirds up into a P and a P to the one-third. So I would, again, count both of those answers correct on your test. So now we are doing some more exponent problems. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the answers the way my uh, student-guided notes are are leaving them because they are consistently leaving them with the numerator bigger than the denominator and not going on and simplifying them. So I'm going to go ahead and follow suit, and do it the way the book is doing it. So this one is, we have two that are already cubes, and I'm going to go ahead and take care of those because if I subtract two-thirds minus five-thirds, I get a negative three-thirds. So h to the negative 3 thirds is really just h to the negative 1 times h to the negative 3 fourths. And when I multiply, I add the exponent. So I can change this into 4 over 4. So I've got negative 4 over 4 minus 3 over 4 because I'm adding them together. And I wind up with h to the negative 7 over 4, but we are supposed to leave these with positive exponents, so this would be 1 over h to the 7 over 4, okay? Now this is the way they're leaving their answer. The other way that I would accept it, if you went ahead and divided 7 by 4 and got 1 and 3 quarters, which is what you had to begin with here, okay? So that would be 1 over h times h and 3 quarters. That is also a correct answer. So I will accept it this way and this way, okay? This one would not be simplified if we put it in the radical form, but they are leaving their answers. The textbook is leaving their answers in this form, so we're going to go with that. But I will not penalize you if you go ahead and do that either. So you have two ways you can leave those answers.
And here we have another one that even looks more complicated. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do what's in the parentheses first. And I've got an M and an M, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract those. But notice that I don't have a common denominator. So when I divide, I'm going to subtract the exponents. So I'm going to have one fifth, I mean, one half turns into uh, five tenths, and three fifths turns into six tenths, so that when I divide, I subtract, 5 tenths minus 6 tenths is going to be m to the negative 1 tenth. So we got m to the negative 1 tenth with the m's. And then the n's, we don't have any fractions, but we've got n to the negative 3 divided by n to the negative 5, which means I'm going to have negative 3 minus a negative 5 but that's going to make it a plus 5, so it's going to wind up being an n to the 2. And then I'm going to raise that to the negative 3 halves. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take these things, this little fraction addition thing over there, so I have a little bit more room. So now this answer is going to wind up when I raise these powers to another power, I end up multiplying the two powers together. So this is going to wind up being m to the negative one-tenth times negative three-halves, which is a positive three-twentieths. And then this one times this one, the twos are going to cancel, but I'm going to get an n to the negative three. So finally, I need to move my negative three down to the denominator, so my answer is going to be m to the 3 halves on top over n to the third. And that is the way they would leave it. Um, but I would not count it wrong if you did m times m to the 1 half. I'm okay with that too. So either one of these. This is the way your book is leaving it, and that's fine. So there you have another problem. So now, this one we should put into a radical form and have 36 to the 5 over 10, not radical form, rational exponent form. And then 5 tenths becomes 1 half, so we get 36 to the 1 half, which is 6. And then, on this one, we're going to write this as a, with a rational exponent, so 6 over 8, which is x to the 3 fourths, and that is all I can do with that one. So now we have the cubic root of 11 to the third. Since I have odds, it's going to, even if it were a negative sign, it wouldn't affect it, but it's going to wind up being 11. When you have the root and the power the same, you just get whatever is under the radical. On this one, we've got the fourth root and the cube. I mean, excuse me, the fourth root and the fourth power, and we will get 3. Here, we have p squared and the square root of that. Now, we learned earlier that this would have to become the absolute value of p, but in this section, they said assume that all variables are non-negative numbers. So because of that assumption, we no longer have to write the absolute value. And I believe that that is all of 9.2. And this is Mrs. A, and may God bless your day. Oops, I have one correction on this board that I did before, 
and I had multiplied this and I think I had said it was 3 over 20 but when I wrote it I wrote 3 over 2 that should have been a 20 right there and that would make this one a 3 over 20 right there so I made a little uh, typo there with my pen and that is the end of 9.2